I'm on a bus to the airport. I'm here to fly Air Canada business class. Good morning. I'm flying to Newark. After going through border control, I usually head to the Maple Leaf Lounge, but allegedly they have a cafe near our gate. And there it is, right by our gate, there is something called Maple Leaf Lounge Express. Stepping in, I can see that this is not a very spacious space, but don't let that stop you from coming here. With so few passengers here, this small room feels bigger, and it is most certainly quieter than the regular transborder Maple Leaf Lounge when it's packed, and that lounge is usually packed. My real issue with this lounge is the lack of food. I'm visiting right as they opened early in the morning, and they only have yogurt and muffins. They don't have any breakfast sandwiches here. The same ones they serve in the regular lounge could be served here. I hope they bring some food later in the day. Choosing which lounge to go to is easy. If you're looking for a quiet place, come here. If you go to lounges for the food, head to the real Maple Leaf Lounge after security. Outside the lounge, inside this secluded part of the airport, it doesn't feel like you're a Toronto Pearson Airport. It feels like a small regional airport, especially with all these CRJs being towed by farming equipment. This area of the airport has a Starbucks and a burger restaurant. If you're looking for something else, get in the main concourse before getting to these gates. But some construction seems to be happening, so they might have more food options soon. Some people call this area of Pearson the basement. I don't agree with that. Because it's literally the ground floor. Haha, <laughs> that was funny. Okay, let's board the plane. When the boarding was supposed to start, a man walked from the gate bridge. This signified absolutely nothing. A few minutes later, the actual boarding started. You wouldn't expect a long boarding process for a plane that only has 76 seats, yet the boarding is long, because literally, the walk to the plane is long. But eventually the jet bridge ends, and turns out it wasn't a jet bridge, it was an exit onto the airport apron where the plane is parked. This two-year-old CRJ900 is our ride to Newark. Stepping inside the jet, it's outfitted with the latest atmosphere cabin. Hi, Air Canada is an airline that takes risks with their cabin design, and so this cabin follows the black, grey, white colors like the rest of their premium cabins. Some people call this sophisticated, I call it boring, but it's still nice, and plus, who am I to judge, all my clothes today are black. I'll be sitting in seat 4F, easy choice because it's the only row in this cabin where windows line up with the seats. Still on the ground, a flight attendant brought hot towels for passengers and business. Usually Air Canada hands out hot towels after takeoff, but they must be efficient on these short hops. With the boarding complete, the plane refueled, and hot towels collected, we're ready for takeoff. This is Buttonville Airport, an airport I do not like. You see, it's located near my house, and therefore I can't fly my drone near my house. Perhaps a good rule though, since in 2021, a student pilot in a Cessna collided with a drone while on approach to land. The Cessna sustained some damage, but landed safely. Ironically, the $20,000 drone involved in the collision was piloted by the local police department. We also flew by Toronto and its city airport. I don't have any complaints about it either, I just think the shot is pretty. This is the most perfect view I've ever had of the city from a plane. If you haven't noticed, most of the footage of the takeoff was sped up. If you want to see the full unedited takeoff footage, I will leave a link to it in the description. Ladies and gentlemen, Wi-Fi services available on this aircraft. You will be able to connect to the internet by paying Despite a flight attendant making a whole announcement that there is Wi-Fi, and an illuminated Wi-Fi symbol in the ceiling, there is no Wi-Fi. And this isn't a one-off event. The latest CRJ900s that Air Canada received during COVID do not have Wi-Fi. It's a little embarrassing that flight attendants make these announcements on planes that don't even have Wi-Fi hardware installed. It's also just bad that there is no Wi-Fi. I can't even purchase internet access, while Porter, another Canadian airline, has free Wi-Fi on all their jets. Now let's have a look at the seat and its comforts. Above all the seats, there are air nozzles and reading lights. 
Moving down, there is no entertainment screen. Air Canada's older CRJs have small screens. Yes, they're horribly outdated, but they're still better than nothing. Not sure what I'm recording here, perhaps a lack of a code hook. Moving down, the storage pocket is spacious and will easily fit your photography gear. Otherwise, it just contains an air sickness bag and a safety manual. On your left is a big immovable armrest, which has cutouts for drinks. Don't worry, I'm not drinking at 8 a.m., it's just sparkling water with a little bit of vodka. There's another cutout on the side of the armrest. This could have been storage if there was a net, but there's no net, so it's just a useless cutout. On your right is another immovable armrest. This one contains the tray table. Open the armrest and pull the table out. In this position, it's fairly sturdy. Open it further and it's no longer as sturdy. Begrudgingly, the table can also slide outward or inward to accommodate various belly sizes. Lastly, between the two seats, there are universal power outlets and USB ports. In terms of comfort, this seat offers lots of legroom to stretch out your legs. I'm 6 foot and 2 inches and you can see how much legroom I have. At the top of the seat, there is a large adjustable headrest and the seat itself is padded very nicely. It's very comfortable. I can see myself spending 3-4 to four hours in this seat, but this flight is only about an hour so let's move to breakfast. Despite this flight being only about an hour long, and with only about 40 minutes between takeoff and landing, Air Canada still manages to serve hot breakfast. This is it. Starting with the least exciting we have yogurt, some fruits, bread, butter and jam, and the main dish, parsley omelette, chicken sausage, roasted potato with cottage cheese and red pepper relish on the side. This is the only option on short morning flights. On longer flights, in addition to the omelette there could be french toast or pancakes. I've had this breakfast dish a few times now and I've enjoyed it. The omelette, chicken sausage and potatoes are just okay. Luckily the whole meal is leveled up by the delicious red pepper relish and the cottage cheese. Without the relish, this meal would be labeled bland airplane food. The omelette is like a middleman between my tongue and the relish. Make sure to budget your condiments though, otherwise your last bites aren't going to be as pleasant. Moving to the side dishes, the fruits tasted fresh and the bread was warm. I skipped the yogurt though, but if you want to know what it tasted like, Go to Walmart and try it yourself. I have better things to do, like film an airplane toilet. Hello. As you can see, I do not fit in here. Small plane, small lavatory. In front of you is a very large well-lit mirror spanning the whole wall. Below is a small countertop with surprising amount of flat, usable space. It also features a sink and a faucet with the most uniform water flow I have ever seen on a plane. A toilet can be found here, and above it is a baby changing table. This is a very typical air candle lavatory, it's just small. In preparation for landing, please ensure that your seatbelt is fastened. Okay, let's get out of here. I generally enjoyed this flight, but there were pros and cons. Air Canada has 35 CRJ's 900s. Eight of them look like this with Bombardier's atmosphere cabin. I assume because of the 737 MAX groundings and COVID-19 part shortages, Air Canada rushed these eight planes into service without an IFE screens and Wi-Fi. I would not care about a lack of an IFE if this plane at least had a Wi-Fi based entertainment system like they have on their Rouge planes, but it doesn't. Even Canada Jetlines, an airline with two planes has this. And I also expect internet access from a business focused airline such as Air Canada. I would like to see them retrofit these planes with Wi-Fi. Look, I know that I'm on a short flight today, but these planes often do 2-3 to three hour long trips, so they should have these features. Okay, on to good things now. I think this seat is perfect for a regional jet. I'm not looking for private pods on these routes, I'm just looking for a comfortable recliner seat. The amount of cushioning in the seat was good and I had lots of legroom. Though I do wish that the tray table was more stable in the fully extended position, but it was more than fine for eating. I'm always impressed that Air Canada manages to cram hot breakfast on such short flights. I don't think any other North American airline provides service like this on an hour long flight. And the breakfast is quite good, I've had that omelette turkey sausage and potato dish many times now from different airports and I've always enjoyed it. And plus, with the priority services at the airport, luggage allowance and lounge access, I think Air Canada provides a good business class product on these short routes at a decent value. But is it worth the price difference? Not for me, but maybe for you. Depends how you value your time and comfort and also how much money you have. All I know is I enjoyed this flight and I think this is the best way to fly these short trips within North America. Just install Wi-Fi, please.
All right, so I finished another video and you watched it. Thank you. If you liked it, please leave a like and also subscribe as I'll be uploading one video per week for the next two months. Okay, bye-bye.